subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Humans love music. We are all exposed to music or song in one form or another and a majority of humans understand rhythms and we can tap our feet to the beat of a song even without taking a single music lesson. Some animals and birds also sing and also have a rhythm. We know that most birds sing bird songs, we know that whales sing and we know that lemurs do too. But there are complex rhythms in our music that we previously thought were unique only to human song. Turns out an endangered species of lemur actually understands a 1 is to 2 beat where one note is twice as long as others and sings this way naturally. This is a huge evolutionary step and something that we thought that only we could understand among mammals. In this video, we'll talk about lemurs, singing lemurs, the evolution of music and rhythm and dance, some classical music and one of my favorite bands, Queen. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Humans are primates as are lemurs. Lemurs are native only to the island of Madagascar. They are small, they look like a cross between monkeys and rodents sometimes, but because they are endemic only to Madagascar, they actually evolved independently on this island from apes and monkeys. They are also highly diverse because of the small ecosystem. There are about 100 species of lemurs and all of them are endemic to this island. The lemurs of Madagascar like to sing and some dance or at least they seem to dance. A lot of us have probably seen this with one famous lemur from Madagascar. King Julian in the cartoon is a ring-tailed lemur and the one that dances or seems to dance when it moves is the Sifaka lemur which also hums. But the subject of this video and the research it's about is the Indri Indri lemur which is critically endangered. It is one of the largest species of lemurs and as of today is the only other mammal that we know which can use rhythm. Researchers from Italy have published a new study after 12 years of lemur observations and recordings in Madagascar and have identified a specific rhythm in lemur songs. After studying hundreds of these songs, the scientists found that the Indri lemur uses a rhythm that only humans have been known to use among mammals, but which birds also have been observed to use. To understand this, let's look at some basic beats. There is the basic beat which sounds like a metronome. This sticks in the 1 is to 1 ratio where each note is of the same length. But there are various time signatures in music where you have a set number of beats but the way you play the notes within those beats can vary and that's what makes music. And this is what the lemurs are doing. The authors compare the lemur song and rhythm to Queen's We Will We Will Rock You. The claps and beats at the beginning of the song have a 1 is to 2 beat ratio where one note is twice as long as the other. The pattern is short, short, long. We've seen this rhythm before in nightingale thrushes, but this is the first time we are seeing it in a mammal other than us. The researchers have a video of the lemurs singing. It's not just the rhythm. These lemurs can also harmonize, join in on choruses and have singing competitions, which are actually vocal battles for territory. They also have unique flavors in their music that is very similar to human music. They can even finish their music with a flourish and slowing down, which in classical music is known as ritardando. This is where music slowly slows down and the last few beats drag out just as the music is finishing. The Indri does this too. And this is a little crazy to us because we didn't know that any other mammal could understand music and sing this way. There are many theories that attempt to answer why humans understand rhythm, why we develop the sense and why we started to appreciate and understand music in the first place. There are two main schools of thought. There's one school that thinks that 
Understanding rhythm and music is biological in origin and came about as a need for survival of our species. And there's the other group that thinks that music is cultural and came about with the formation of society. Let's look at the first one. In evolution, everything is about natural selection and survival of the fittest for the most part, whether it be being a predator or being a prey to something. We've seen before that survival of the fittest doesn't really mean which animal lives long or healthy. It simply means which ones mate and propagate their genes. So when disadvantages animals or species or plants get killed off and die, the survivors get to mate and spread their genes and their genetic population increases. One of the theories for rhythm and dance is for predatory or protection purposes. Rhythm likely first evolved by clapping or striking two objects together. For example, striking two stones to create fire, which also makes probably a pleasant noise. A human can move and flail their body about, appearing larger in a rhythmic, non-random way to scare a predator. The rhythmic motion might make it appear that the movement is cohesive and comes from the same organism. Multiple animals can come together and dance or move in a rhythmic manner in accordance with specific time intervals to appear to be larger and scare away predators and move like a single creature is moving naturally. That kind of movement and synchronization requires rhythm. Humans are also social animals. The more closely we are bonded, the higher our chances of survival, evolutionarily speaking. Dance and music brings people together and makes us bond together, which provides an evolutionary advantage. Through natural selection, the genes that appreciated music survived and those spread as those humans bonded. This is the theory. But we don't know how old music is. Music is very old. The oldest known musical instruments are almost 50,000 years old and they're typically flutes which are made of wood or bones. This meant that vocal music would have evolved much earlier. We don't know exactly when. Good music requires modulation and changing of pitch and we can check this through fossil evidence to see whether a human ancestor had the ability to modulate their pitch. And it turns out Early apes and Neanderthals and even the common ancestors of Neanderthals and early humans from whom we evolved had the ability to change their pitch. But we don't know if they sang. Darwin also proposed that music is a form of sexual selection, just like in birds. Female birds are attracted to the most attractive bird song and bird dance displays. And well, do we like pop and rock stars or what? Of course we do. But of course, this theory works at a basal and individual level and not many scientists think that it works at an evolutionary level anymore for humans. This is because human cognition is much more evolved than birds. But most people in the world understand music and music as a concept is very simple and easily understandable and imitable even if badly done. Even babies understand music and can identify pitches and remember melodies of songs. So music could have evolved as a soothing way for parents and infants to bond with lullabies. What is interesting is if we go back, we don't know truly what came first, music or language. It's likely that they evolved together or like Darwin thought, music may have actually given rise to language. Distance communication could have occurred through music first, like we see with bird songs and even with lemur songs today. Bird noises are very limited with a very limited vocabulary, but bird songs can be very complex and rhythmic and tonal with choruses and responses and many other flavors. So this form of communication could have led to language is the theory. The other theory states that humans, like other apes, are social and have always engaged in grooming practices. These kind of grooming and social practices keep a group cohesive and build relationships and thus offer protection. Grooming releases endorphins which make us feel good as does singing and music. 
As our social groups grew larger and more complex with more cultural elements, grooming just wasn't enough and singing and dancing and even laughing together is thought to be a scaled up version of this bonding behavior. Some scientists believe that music did not evolve naturally and that it was an invention that came about after culture and society came about. And then it of course has a biological advantage still, so that was a feedback loop which improved musicality at a genetic and biological level for humans. We can investigate this genetically but we won't really be able to identify a specific gene for musicality. Much like language or memory or processing of any of our sensory organs, music is polygenic which means that multiple genes come together and play a complicated role interacting with each other and we don't fully understand this. The lemurs rhythms were quite surprising to us and now scientists wonder if other animals like whales also have complex rhythmic patterns in their songs. We've never truly studied this and this study itself spanned over a decade but hopefully now we'll find out in the future as this study spurs more observations and studies of other animals' ability for musicality.